Hey Algebra 1, thanks for tuning in. We're going to be looking at Lesson 6.3 Part 2. We're still going to be talking about exponential functions, but now we're going to talk about what happens when we graph them and what would they look like when we graph them. You are going to be giving, um, guide, you are going to be giving guided notes today, so just make sure you have those. And we're going to start, we're going to be looking for eight different things to try. So let's go ahead and look at number one. The first thing you want to do is you're going to be filling out this table. Um, and then here is your function that you're basically going to be filling out. So you're basically just going to be replacing the x with one of these exponents. Um, so for instance, 2 to the x power is going to be equal to y. Well, this next one you would do instead of that, you do 2 to the third power and then solve it. 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then you would keep going here. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and finish filling out the rest of this chart and then remember that for these negative exponents that's going to give you a fraction so just be careful with those and then once you have your x and your y values then you can go ahead and plot the points so let me go ahead and get you to pause the video here so you can go ahead and try those and then once you're done click play so you can check to see what your graph looks like so the very first thing I did here was when I finished filling out my graph, um, just as a reminder, your negative exponents make it a, to make them a positive, they have to be written as a fraction or the reciprocal of your negative exponent. Um, so you do have some fractions at the very end. Now I'm going to show you where these points should be plotted. So here are where my points are plotted. Um, notice when I get down to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, these are all going to be fractions. So I tried to estimate as best as I could. So they get closer and closer and closer to the um, x-axis, but they don't actually touch the x-axis because they're just getting a smaller um, fraction. So when I graph this, you're going to have kind of a um, curve-shaped part here, and we're going to talk about what these are called here in a moment. Um, but this is what your graph would look like if you just have 2 to the x power and you're given several different x values. Okay, so we're going to go on, and this one just obviously you want to put arrows at the end because it, it means it just continues. We're going to go on and try number 2 and see how that one changes. Notice your, your 2 is negative, so that's going to change your values just a little bit. And it might actually have some similarities with uh, graph 1. Um, maybe just look like a reflection. So let's go ahead again and pause here. Again, what you're doing is just filling out and plugging in x. So like for the first one, it'd be negative 2 to the third power, which is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, and that gives you negative 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and try those. Again, let's pause the video here. Once you're done, click play so you can check your work. Something I forgot to mention too, because we don't have any parentheses around this, doesn't mean that all of the um, all of the twos are negative. So actually, you're just going to have one to be negative, that should be positive, which still means your answer should be negative. So here are your inputs and your outputs after you've solved them. Now let's look to see what they look like on the. Again, you can notice that you still have this kind of curved line here, and you're going to get again closer and closer and closer to that x-axis, but never really touch the x-axis. So this is what your graph will look like. And just notice how the difference between graph 1 and graph 2. And we're going to do a little summary here for numbers 3 and 4. So for number 3, when b is greater than 1, the graph is increasing. Or it shows growth. When a is greater than 0, that means it is above the asymptote. And then the domain would be all real numbers. Remember domain is x. And then range, it just has to make sure that your y is greater than 0. Um, so you're going to always get, again, closer and closer to the x-axis, which means y is constantly going to decrease, but it's never actually going to touch it. You're just going to have super small numbers there. Over here, though, when a is less than 0, um, it's going to be below the asymptote or reflected. Um, and once again, the domain is almost, the domain is the same, all real numbers. 
but the range is when we have y is less than zero. So again, creeping up to that x-axis, but not actually touching it. Okay, so just make sure if you need to pause the video here so you can write down for number three. And once you're ready to click play, we're going to number four and define the horizontal asymptote. All right, so horizontal asymptote is a line that's gonna um, that the graph of a function approaches but it never actually touches. Um, in this case, it's more than likely going to be, or what we've seen so far, is it's going to be that parallel line towards the x-axis. So in an, experiment, in an exponential function down here at the bottom, or the second thing you write underneath this definition, the asymptote is a horizontal or parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so if you haven't already, let's go ahead and pause the video so you can write down what the horizontal asymptote is. And then once you're done, click place, so we can flip the page and see what the rest of notes hold for us. Okay, so the next part, we're just going to be looking at what if B um, was less than 1 but still greater than 0, and how is that going to affect our graph? Okay, so once again, we're going to try where we have our function. One, in this case, it's 1 half in parentheses to the x power and we're going to be plugging in the exponent here. So 1 half to the third power means 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 eighth, okay? Basically, you're just changing that 2 to the third power again and making that your denominator still. Uh, be very careful with how you do these negatives, but I still want you to give it a try by yourself first. So let's go ahead and pause the video here to fill out our chart and then go ahead and graph it too. So first things we're going to check is your graph, or your, sorry, not your graph, but your table. Um, so I plugged in your exponents here for the first four options. Those should have been pretty simple. You're just distributing the 3 to everything inside the parentheses, and you get 3 comma 1 eighth, 2 comma 1 fourth, 1 comma 1 half, 0 comma 1. But when you come down here and you're distributing the negative exponent, to everything in your parentheses, that means everything is going to flip. So this 1 to the negative first power is going to go down to the bottom, 2 to the negative first power will go on top, so you get just 2. Same thing for to the negative second power and to the negative third power. Now let's go ahead and put them onto your graph. So here's what your graph looks like now, and notice when b is less than 1 but still greater than 0, we are now just flipping the script. So it looks a lot different than options 1 and 2 on your front page. Now it's just making maybe more of an L-shaped versus the other one, which looks like a backwards L. Okay, let's go on to number six. Again, notice how this is going to make all of your answers negative. So your answers in the Y values should all have negatives in front of them because that negative is on the outside of the parentheses, um, which also is going to probably reflect your um, exponential growth here. So let's go ahead and pause the video to write down and copy in our table, and then go ahead and graph it too. All right, so here's what your graph is going to look like. Again, notice it's very similar to graph number five, except now you just have all your answers in your Y column as negatives. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like as you graph it. So here's what your graph would look like. Again, it looks very similar to graph number five, except we've just reflected over the, y, the X axis and your um, asymptote is still being is still horizontal to that x-axis as well. Again, it creeps towards it, but it doesn't actually touch it. So for number seven, when b is in between zero and one, the graph would show that show it's decreasing. In this case, we call it decay, so it's the opposite of growth. When a is greater than zero, the graph is above the asymptote. The domain still is gonna be all real numbers, But in this case, the range will be greater than 0 for y. And then, likewise, when we have a is less than 0, it's going to be below the asymptote, or basically just reflected. The domain still is all real numbers. And in this case, for the range, y will have to be less than 0. So we're basically just copying what happened with question 5, what happened with question 6. The last one on here, so we're talking about general form and whenever things look like this, um, 
when we have our general form is a times b to the x minus h plus k. h is going to do something and k is going to do something. h is going to shift the graph either left or right, and k will shift the graph either up or down. For the y-intercept, that point is always going to be 0, comma, a, whatever a would be equal to. When x is 0, then b to the 0 will be equal to 1, and 1 times a is equal to a. So they, these have to happen for that y-intercept. The horizontal asymptote, though, is basically the line where a is equal to k. So if those two numbers match, then that is the line where it's going to gradually get closer, closer, closer. On all of our examples, we didn't have a k, so that was 0. So that means the horizontal line is 0, and that just means y is equal to 0. Okay? That's going to conclude our notes for 6.3 part 2. Um, I just put some extra um, examples in here where a is greater than 0 or less than 0. And when b is greater than 1 or b is less than 1 but still bigger than 0. So again, we're seeing how those changed. But again, this was question 1, 2, and then question um, 5 and 6. Okay. So thanks so much for tuning in. Just make sure you hang on to those notes because you might be able to use them later on. And we'll catch you next time.